Welcome back to Light My Way. We will be continuing where we left off, which, if you recall, is after spending the day with uh, Darius, the lion, and uh, oh, yeah, I already forgot his name, the rabbit. Um, basically, Atlas decided to confront this guy, Lucian. And, um, it didn't go well. Uh, it was pretty much devolving into a fight. And Darius had to break it up. Um, and of course this guy decided, it's like, oh no, it's nothing, you know, he was just hurting me. But, like, yeah, it was just a misunderstanding. And, of course Darius didn't believe him. But he left it at that. And, I guess in order to sort of... Uh, keep an eye on him. He brought him to the little uh, the cycling thing to exercise with the rabbit and then eventually to the pool uh, where he got to, I, get, I guess, get closer to these two new people. And I guess, you know, they're going to become his friends now. Um, what else? What else? Mm, I think that's mostly it. Oh, um, somebody decided to share the bed with the lion dude and kind of sort of recharged his energy. Uh, but this time it didn't require him to sort of uh, um, absorb it through his eyes. I guess it was just through contact. And yeah, that's what happened. Anyways, so, um, I guess without further ado, let us continue Light My Way. Chapter 3,000 Nobody's up this early in the morning. The hallways are empty, although in less than an hour, there will be no room to walk through here. I lift my eyes from the marble floor and notice a wolf with a big stack of folders in his arms. Uh, hey, watch out! The wolf swerves and hits the wall next to him, avoiding me at the last second. It's the clerk from the desk when I signed up. Oh my fur! I'm so sorry. I was way too lost in thought. Let me help you with those. I would think having those sunglasses on doesn't help either. Oh, I'm so sorry. Can I help you carry those anywhere? I'm Lucian, by the way. Lucian Vulpus, I remember you with those glasses, actually. The one who complained about the roommate on day one, right? Hmm. I'm Kieran Cliffs. I don't need help, but if you want to join me on the walk, that's okay too. I nod as we finish picking up the folders and start walking. Where are you heading so early in the morning? This entire pile of folders here is for each class from the sports wing for next week. That's just for next week? It's for the elites. Everyone else gets their schedules from their class master or from the Tyrannon app. Why don't they go through the class masters during classes then? Seems unnecessary to hand out folders to each individual elite. It's actually quite important. There was a different rating system for elites. The council changes their practice intensity based on the results that they have after each week. If they're doing great, they are pushed harder. If they're slacking off, they are given less demanding challenges. So I need to deliver updated schedules on a weekly basis. Isn't that counterintuitive? I mean, about the slackers. Why wouldn't they push them harder? When you are an elite and you get offered low-level routines, be it in mathematics or tennis, you should feel like a failure or you will embrace it. Continue slacking off and you lose your elite status. Once gone, you can't get it back. That's tough. They all know what they signed up for. The council pushes each student to reach their full potential. It's a good system. I notice his light, although it's almost clear. I can see it better now that we're walking in silence. It's plain. He's the first folk that I've seen that is close to normal, if normal is a thing anyway. No shine, no shimmer, no circles, spikes, anything. It's a contour 
of his body like a shallow, watery, invisible ink. I know he has a light, but it's transparent. Quite peculiar, but I also feel like I could not wear my sunglasses around him. What a dream. Uh, so, what do you do with the folders? Do you knock on each door in the arch? Oh no, each elite has a post box for this. Once we're there, you'll see the names of each elite in the main hall. You can put a few folders in as well if you'd like. I'm supposed to do that, but I have a feeling that you'll just do fine. I almost knocked you over and you trust me to hand out elite folders? If you mess up the names, they'll change it between themselves, so no need to worry. They also get this folder through the Turnin Elite app. Uh, they get it in paper form too because of legal reasons. Ah, uh, alright. Seems easy enough anyway. I just have to match the name to the folder with the one on the post box. Got it. The sports wing should be where Atlas is, but I'm sure that he's not awake right now. Kieran shows me how he puts in the folders, and I follow suit. I go check and slip each file through the tiny slits of the post boxes, checking each name to be sure that I don't mess up. Fabian. He. Hinara? Haven't seen him in a while. Kieran? This folder isn't going in. The student must have left this previous folder in there and used this app, but it's odd that this box is so full. I'll go ask if I can get the master key to clean it up. I know who it is. He's a friend. It's not surprising that he left such a mess. The wolf pulls out his tablet and starts tapping. What's going on with Fabian? Darius hasn't mentioned him these past few weeks, and it's been a while since I've last seen him. Someone will come here with the master key and open his box so that we can clean it up. Shouldn't you get ready for your class, though? I need to head out, yeah. I hope that I made up for my absent mindedness from earlier today. Yes, you have. Most people ignore me anyway. You're one of the first who offered to help me. That's... Don't worry about it. It's one of my duties and I don't expect anyone else to do it for me. Can I take this folder to my friend? I don't know if that's legal or whatever. I'm supposed to put it in the mailbox, but if you know him... I do. He's on the elite cycling team. The wolf puts a fake inquisitive look for a second, then switches back to his easygoing smile. Sure, I mean, it's not like he didn't get his schedule from this app. I need you to sign this form so that I don't get in trouble if it comes to it. Nothing to worry about, but bureaucracy demands it. I scribble my signature on a tablet form after skimming the text. This wolf is nice, but so plain. Nothing gets to him either way, good or bad. Before leaving the big hall, I turn around and see Kieran and an elder elephant open Fabian's post box. Several folders fall out, spreading across the floor. I find the rabbit's name on the ground floor list at Arch 4 and walk up to his room. I knock a few times, but he's not answering. Fabian? Are you in there? I have something for you. No movement. It's from the school council. Your folder for the week. The door cracks open. He's supporting himself with each hand on the door and on the wall. What's with his light? It's as if he's losing it. Like he's uncharged. Uh, but if he were, by some astronomical coincidence like me, I would somehow sense it, I think. What am I even wrangling, rambling about? He's a ghost at this point. No wonder his light's faded. Yo. I brought you your folder for the next week. Uh, how'd you get that? A uh, long story. Uh, what's going on with you? You don't look so good. You think? The rabbit points to his swollen ankles. He's got anti-inflammatory knee pads on as well. It's a rough sight. Those look terrible. Have you been to the medical center? How do you think that I got the knee pads? Sorry. Give me the folder and buzz off. I wanted to check up on you as well. You checked. Now leave. The rabbit grabs my paw and snatches a folder. I turn to leave, the door slamming in my face, almost smashing my tail in. What a prick. After I take a few steps towards the exit, it hits me. He's overwhelmed by everything. That has to be it. His light is dim, and more 
hectic than usual, which is saying something. This is not the time to leave him alone. I turn around and stand in front of the door for a second. Fabian, I'm going to stay here a while in case you need anything. No reply. I also don't want to annoy him more, so it should be okay if I hang out here for 10 minutes or so. Might as well study up on my next class. While reading through my book, I hear Fabian slump to the floor on the other side of the door. His swollen ankles don't leave room for him to bend without hurting, I guess. I don't get why he has to be such an asshole though. It's not like I am trying to mess with him. I am trying to help. He can be such a pain to deal with sometimes. I see the red ruby light from under the door. A soft pulse, but a brighter than 10 minutes ago. He's getting better it seems. I need to go back to class now. Do you want to drop by sometime? Whenever you're in the mood. Darius isn't doing that great, you know. I caught him asleep with a book in his paw at his desk. Again, no answer. At least I know he's doing better judging by the brightness that's coming from under the door. I better leave since I need to cover some distance. Foxy? Yes? See you soon. See you. I leave smiling and thinking that he is in at least better spirits now. There is a blinding amber light illuminating the stairway as I walk towards it. it. Must be Atlas. I turn around and start running, looking for another exit. The light fades away. The tiger must live above Fabian somewhere. I should have thought about this. They're both elites and in the sports arch. I grab my phone from my pocket and check what the vibration is about. Shoot, I forgot my appointment at the infirmary. It's today. This is bad. I need to be there in less than 15 minutes. It doesn't take long to get called in once I've reached the infirmary, although I'm gasping for air from all the running I did. The waiting room has plenty of patients, but things are moving fast. Tire Nun University working as intended. There is a nurse and, I assume, a member of the teacher's council inside. Good morning, Mr. Volpus. I am Catherine Refulgence, one of the officials of the Teacher's Council and also the headmistress here at the university. Your parents have notified the school of your issue. I am here to oversee your appointment and find a possible solution to your problem. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity for this test. I'm polite about this, although it irks me to go through yet another we don't know what's wrong with your eyes test, but they're offering and it would be rude to decline since my parents already set this up for me. We go through the same old motions I know all too well. I take my sunglasses off and ask them to turn on the lights. The nurse does that, but as usual, that's not helping one bit since that's not the actual problem. We're three folk in this exam room, and I don't have my glasses on. That's enough light to give me a headache for weeks. I try squinting my eyes, and although it's almost pitch black inside the room, I can't keep them open for longer than a few seconds. Are you alright, Mr. Volpus? No, I'm not. I have a strong sensitivity to light as my parents must have mentioned, and it's difficult for me to keep my eyes open without my sunglasses. But there's almost no light in here. What a waste of time. I have better things to do right now. I'm sorry, but I'm getting a headache. Can we end the test? I put my glasses back on and look at the nurse. Can I have some pain relievers and go? How can you see through those glasses now? The panther stares me down, curious, but annoyed at my reflex to grab my sunglasses. Let's try this again. Can you please take off your sunglasses one more time? I'm going to tap a hole with my claw into this chair if you don't finish up soon. It's useless to bother with this, but the panther smiles at me, motioning to take off my sunglasses. Fine. I mean, she is trying to help. Of course. Why are the lights fading away? What's going on? Can you look through the scope and tell me what you see? I'm panicking out of my mind. Chills are going down my spine as I can see without a shadow of a doubt. No light around this misrefulgence. None. Zero. All I see in the infirmary are the lights of two folk, mine and the nurse. 
Or was it three at first? Can she turn it on and off? What's the deal with this panther? I... 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 I'm babbling. My thoughts are racing. I clutch at my chest like my heart's going to leap out. The panic attack is almost here judging by the deep breaths that I'm gasping in. The panther is scaring the shit out of me. She leans towards me to adjust the measurement scope for my snout, making me jump back, looking at her in horror. Kieran had a transparent light of sorts, but this Catherine Refulgence, there's nothing around her. I can look at her without my glasses. The nurse's light is almost dimmed, as if it was adjusted for me to be at a comfortable intensity. Did I startle you? I'm sorry about that. Nurse, can you go to my office and prepare some tea for Mr. Volps and water for myself? We need to have a longer chat after the examination is over. The nurse leaves and I find myself alone with the panther. My throat and mouth are dry, but I get a hold of my voice enough to squeak out a few words. What are you? Excuse me? As you can very well see, I am a panther. That is quite rude of you, Mr. Volps. That's the thing. I can see well. Too well. Like there's nothing wrong with my eyes. Why don't you have a light? An aura? A a something. The panther turns her head and I see a smile out of the corner of her mouth. An aura is such a pre-unification term. It's called an aspect. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. She heard my exact words and she replied to. D did you hear what I said? Was my answer not proof enough of that? Mr. Volps, let's go to my office and have a talk. The tea should be warm by the time that we get there. I put on my sunglasses again and followed the panther out the door, dazed and confused. My mind is shattered into pieces, replaying the last few minutes second by second. Her office is fancy. It's more like a study room with how many bookcases there are here. There are weird looking gadgets on the shelves on the opposite side and a big painting on the wall behind her above her desk. Whoa, the paintings are moving. I heard that they were developing this in Tyrannon. I didn't think that I would get to see this so soon. It's incredible. I need to stop staring and get my shit together. But who's in the big painting anyway? It's a portrait of an elderly panther, from what I can gather. No idea who that is or was. Maybe some head mistress from many seasons ago? Have a seat. Thank you. I am able to gather my thoughts a little after that walk. You want to know why I could hear what you said about that aspect? I nod in agreement, cohesive words still failing to come to my mind to form proper responses. The panther pushes a cup of tea towards me, pointing to a jar of honey. I sweeten my tea and take a sip. It's lukewarm and tastes as well, with a scent of vanilla. I can understand your distress, however, you need to answer at some point. I apologize for my previous reaction. You caught me by surprise. Up to now, I wasn't able to talk to anyone about this. Yes, that is the equalizer at work. Before I can ask what that is, she starts explaining. Nobody knows what the equalizer is or why it stops us from talking about the aspects. We can talk to anyone with knowledge of aspects, but no one else. Writing, recording your own voice, everything gets jumbled up. You've tried to it too, I assume? My eyes are like saucers, and I'm sure that I haven't blinked at all in the last minute or two. I nod again, sipping from the tea this time. That's relaxing me more and more as I drink it. It must be a calming tea. If it were any stronger, I think that I would have fallen asleep by now. Wait. What if she's drugging me? Here I am going to an eye test and this random panther with no light calls me into her office for a chat. How naive can I be? For all I know, she could be a maniac who's trying to steal my light. I have always needed light from others. What if she wants all of mine? Mr. Volts, would you care to answer? Maybe you should answer some questions. Who are you? I believe we've already established that. Cut the shit. Who are you? Where's your light? Aspect, whatever. Your language is quite inappropriate, Mr. Volps. As if that's the actual problem here. From my perspective, she's an alien. But 
if there was any moment in my life when I thought that I might be crazy with this light stuff, it's clear that I am now. In fact, not hallucinating. This is real, and it's scaring me out of my mind. I'm sorry about that, but you have to understand how everything about this is shocking to me. To say the least, I'm trembling just thinking about it, that someone hears what I am saying. This is the first time that I am talking about this light stuff for real. Aspect. This is the actual term best describing what you see. Try to use that, please. Okay. What's an aspect, then? That's not as easy to explain. As far as we know, it's an extension of our own self. Imagine wearing a costume of yourself, but in a larger size. So, where's yours, then? Why can't I see it? If you could, that would indeed be quite a feat. The cockiness exuded from that last sentence is through the roof. Who does she think she is? What I mean is that I, along with a few other distinguished folk, have the benefit of being able to not show it if I don't want to. It's not that my aspect isn't visible, because you could see it if I allowed it. I can overlay my aspect on myself, so no need to reveal anything to others. I am quite certain that I saw your light. Aspect. Aspect. In the infirmary, there were three, mine, the nurse's, and yours. You must be mistaken. No, no. I'm sure of it. I saw three. Aspects. I was getting a relaxed vibe for a bit like we were on the same wavelength, but it's been a good minute since my tail's been shivering. Speaking of seeing aspects, I have something for you. I look with suspicion at the drawer she opened. There are tons of small, weird-looking gadgets in it similar to the ones behind me on the glass shelves. The panther takes out a small box, placing it on the desk in front of me. Open it. What is it? Where's your student curiosity? The little box seems harmless enough. I sniff at it, which provokes a bit of laughter from the panther. She even has tears in her eyes from my reaction. Mr. Volps, please do calm down. I have no intention of hurting you, if that's on your mind. I can open the box for you in case you think that it will explode in your face or any other ridiculous nonsense. She laughs again, further embarrassing me. But what should I have done? Take whatever this well-intended strange panther offers me? On the other paw, why would she hurt me? She could have done so if she wanted to already. I need to put on the brakes on the imaginary TV scenarios building in my head. But why is my damn tail shivering then? I open the box and look inside. There are two transparent contact lenses in a small plastic encasing. I pick them up and the light from the window shining on them. They're gorgeous. Moving the lenses in the light shows off every possible color. Fascinating. Why are you showing me these? They're for you. Maybe it's time that you leave those sunglasses behind. You are our tire nunion now, therefore entitled to our developing technology. These contact lenses aren't anything new but they will do what you might be thinking right now. The mood has changed, and I let go of my anxiety, as if I didn't have it in the first place. A bit weird, and I still need to be vigilant, but things are calmer now. Maybe that tea really was meant only to relax me a little. The moment that I saw the contact lenses, I thought of a life where I wouldn't have to wear sunglasses everywhere I went. I am too excited to even contain it, and as much as I would like to not look like a giddy pup, it's damn near impossible. I'm almost bouncing on the chair while my tail swishes behind me. Wasn't I scared a few minutes ago? Well, not anymore. This is awesome. Oh, do try them on, Mr. Volps. No need to play it cool. Like a cup opening presents on Grand Unification Day, I take out the contact lenses, looking at them mystified. These can fix my problem seeing the... aspects? They should. You are not the first with this issue, although a rare one to be sure. Your way of harnessing aspects is through your vision. Others get it in different ways. Others? There are other equalizers. You must have expected that. Equalizers. That's how we refer to folks who can do what you do. And no, I didn't think that there were anyone else like me. How could I possibly know this? Who are they? Are they here in Tyronen? Can I meet them? Slow down, Mr. Volps. Yes. There are other equalizers at Tyrannon. In fact, you've met one already. Darius, Fabian? They both felt strange. I knew it. Kieran Cliffs. 
Of course. The wolf with the transparent light. Yes, I did. Does he know that I'm an equalizer? He should, considering he is my assistant here. It would be disappointing if he didn't. You said that there's something called the equalizer stopping me from talking about aspects to anyone else. Yes, in a matter of speaking. You are working for the equalizer, therefore your title. My head hurts from getting all this information at once. A headache from anything else than lights. A nice change of pace. What does an equalizer even do? Mr. Volps, I believe that we've reached the end of our chat for now. Wait, no. You can't dump all this information and then expect me to leave. You do have class soon. Missing class can lead to expulsion. We wouldn't want that to happen. Mr. Cliffs will notify you of our next meeting, which will be soon enough. Have a very productive day. I'm leaving with a million and one questions and she doesn't care. She opens the door to her office and I step out in a complete stupor. I amble towards the exit of the hallway, forcing my brain to comprehend what happened. I check the contact lenses that I got gifted. They look normal, aside from the beautiful colors that they shine in the light. I open my backpack and lower them in with as much care as I can muster. I'm excited about what I learned, although I have so many questions I want to ask Miss Refulgence. For starters, the most important one. Why me? Why am I this equalizer? Even more so, what is it that I am supposed to do with this knowledge? Equalizer. Okay, great. What now? I turn around and pace back to her office. She should tell me what I need to know. What does it matter if I skip one class? I need answers now. As I approach the door, I lift my paw to knock. A sinking feeling twists my stomach. Something is telling me that I shouldn't do this. Is she making me feel this way? My tail is shivering again. What was that thing about her aspect that I couldn't see it? What if she is dangerous after all? This is so frustrating. I want answers, but maybe it's best if I go to class like she told me to. I know more than I have ever known about this entire aspect thing. Overall, this is a win. And like my dad says, celebrate victories. I'm ditching class and going to my room. Darius shouldn't be there since he's in full-on study mode all day, every day. I can try out these contact lenses, although I should have done so at the office with the Miss Refulgence. She did kick me out before I got the chance, though. They're just contact lenses. How hard can this be? I open the dorm room door and see Darius in bed facing the wall, his light a faint glow, darker than usual. First Fabian, now Darius. Is there something in the air? Uh, hey Darius. Why aren't you in class? I could ask you the same thing. The lion is curled up under his blanket, staring at the wall. Are you alright? It... it is too much. I am exhausted. I cannot continue on my current path. I am not even an elite, and I cannot keep up. It is unfathomable to me how elites get by. I don't think elites get by. Fabian is not doing well at all. His ankles are swollen and he has anti-inflammatory pads on both knees. The lion turns around, revealing his red eyes and puppy face. He's been crying, and by the looks of it, a whole lot. Fabian is hurt? Yeah, uh, a lot, I'd say. I need to go to him. Why have I not been with him? What is wrong with me? Darius growled those last words. If you don't mind me asking, how do you even know Fabian? No offense, but he seems like the complete opposite of the type of folk that I could see you being friends with. He is quite different from me, yes. We met a season ago here in Tyrannon when my parents brought me to see the university. Fabian was also here during that time. We were both looking for directions towards the arches. I asked if he was a student here and he replied, no, but we will both be soon enough. I thought he had a strong character, so we kept in contact. Once here, as he predicted, things fell into place with him. I thought that you knew each other from much longer ago. He's direct with you like there is no limit to what he can say. Come to think of it, he's like that with everyone as far as I've seen. He has a way of saying things, and he stops me from my usual overthinking. Fabian gets me like others do not. That must feel nice, having someone like that around. Yeah, he does have a way with how he puts things into perspective. More like being a blunt axe in a tree stump. 
but I suppose that there is something to admire about that as well. Anyway, um, what are you doing here? I do not know what to say. This is usually a phase. I sometimes get overwhelmed, but it goes away after I meditate or take a walk. It is different this time, though. You wanna move over? The lion looks at me with a straight face, although his eyes betray his desperate need for physical contact. He flips his tear-soaked pillow and scoots over enough for me to lay next to him. I don't wa wait for him to ask and hug him tight. He bursts into tears not a second later. I am such a failure. I cannot do this anymore, Lucien. There is no end to how much I have to study to become an elite. Ah, that's why. But why are you doing this? Can't you become a cardinal if you're entry level like me? Darius squeezes me tighter, burying me in his warm fur. I do not expect you to know this, but the best that I can hope for after I graduate from Tyranon is to be a teacher, if I even get there. Of course you'll get there, but you don't just want to be a teacher. Only five out of hundreds here graduate as cardinals at the end of their studies. Five! It leads as well. There has never been one entry-level student in the history of Tyranon to become a cardinal after graduating. What if you're the first? I say that, but I feel unsure about it myself. Darius has been studying almost every waking moment since he's been here, and he has most likely prepared for this months or even years in advance as well. Yet he's lying here, lost and almost broken. Darius? The lion looks at me with tears in his eyes. Why do you want to become a cardinal? His big arms loosen up at my question. I have always dreamed that I would be one, since I was a cub. My parents always told me that I would be one. Well, do you want to become a cardinal, or did your parents want you to be one? The lion clears the tears from his face and gets up from under the covers. Lucian, I am terribly sorry for my outburst. Honestly, I do not know what came over me. If you would be ever so kind as to forget this entire mess, that would be a welcomed, friendly gesture. I need to get to class now. I look at him, marveling at how easy the switch is in his head flipped. He was a crying wreck a moment ago, now a towering statue. But I see who he really is on the inside and how much effort he puts into his sturdy, calm exterior he shows off everywhere he goes. Why don't you want to talk about this stuff? It's only us two. You can say what's on your mind. I won't judge. As I said, best forgotten. Excuse me. Darius heads to the bathroom, leaving me disappointed at what transpired. His parents ingrained his attitude into him every chance they got. It's most likely by a default setting. He goes back to whenever things get out of the ordinary. I expected more from him. Isn't part of being a cardinal also looking within and all that? In the chaos with Darius, I forgot about the lenses. I would need to use the bathroom mirror for this, but I'll try them on here since Darius must be washing his tear-filled fur in there. If anything goes wrong, I have an excuse to get him out of the bathroom and see how he's doing. The lenses shine their beautiful lights again. I pull a one out of its casing and hover it over one of my eyes. If I drop it, it jumped onto my eye. What the hell is this? It hurts so bad. I grab onto the desk, studying myself. Again, it's fine now. But that was scary. I would need that mirror, damn it. I use my phone camera. My eye looks okay-ish. Somewhat red from the in initial shock, but nothing out of the ordinary. After squirming around from putting in the second lens, I lay on my bed looking around. No difference. I hear the door from the bathroom open and shut my eyes out of pure instinct. When I hear Darius get close, I squint my eyes open to check the brightness levels. It's... it's... amazing. Oh my fur. This is so liberating. Not only can I look at him, I can see his aspect. But there is another line around him. It's like that panther said. The big lion looks like Darius. I can see specific traits, but it's a big, sturdy line, all right. So that's an aspect. Wow. It's surreal. Well, real. This is real. It's actually all real. I'm not crazy. I look at my paw and dash to the bathroom, almost knocking Darius over. A fox? 
two, three, five. That is a lot of foxes around me. These things must be broken. I must have put them in wrong. I'll take them out and try again. What the hell? It's not working. No, 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 no. They're stuck? Forever? There has to be a way to get them out. Or maybe they need to be calibrated or something. I need to get to Miss Refulgence right now. Darius is standing in front of the bathroom holding my sunglasses in his paw. Are you not wearing your sunglasses anymore? How come? I got these new contact lenses from the medical center. They kind of fixed my issues. I never asked about your situation so as not to make you feel self-conscious. What is it that those lenses do? I see his aspect staring at me with a solemn look, and I take a few steps back fearing the imposing purple line shape. I can't quite make it out in its entirety. It's smiling. That I can make out. I think it's smiling at me. Should I smile back? No, no. What would Darius think? Gah. I'll get another headache if I keep this up, and I don't have time to waste. Uh, they fix how much brightness reaches my eyes. Uh, listen, Darius. I really have to go now. I'm almost out the door, but I turn around again, staring at the purple wonder that still keeps on smiling at me. I flash a smile and leave. It smiled at me. I had to smile back otherwise. What would my dad think? That might have been rude, but I left without thinking for an answer, running outside, blazing towards Mr. Fulgence's office, although I am almost on all fours. It's taking forever to get there. I cut a corner, bumping straight into Kieran, knocking both of us to the ground. Hey, watch it. Oh. It's you again. <sighs> Had to be you. Kieran, I'm so sorry. It couldn't be avoided, I guess. Where are you headed in such a hurry? The wolf notices my lack of sunglasses, then looks at my eyes. So you've been to Miss Refulgence's office? His transparent aspect is crystal clear to me now. I can see all of it in great detail, down to each strand of fur. Why can't I see his aspect like this but not Darius's? You're staring. I assume on my aspect? Looks cool, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it does. There is... This intense wolf around him monitoring the area, looking left and right as if to alert Kieran of any possible dangers that might be nearby. I'm of no interest to it right now, as it passes me by with a short glare. I need to see Miss Refulgence. There are questions that I need answers to right now. That would be impossible since she has left campus. But if you don't mind, what is it that you want to ask her? I could maybe help fill in any gaps? Fill in gaps? Are you serious? I found out that I am an equalizer, whatever that means or is. My entire life I thought that I was crazy, hallucinating shiny lights around folk. This seems odd. Has your aspect not talked to you at all? What do you mean? Well, how can I put it simply? When I was a young pup, my aspect spoke to me. It differs from folk to folk, but you can get some contact once you are aware of its existence. It's usually among the lines of, don't be scared, this is normal, you have to harness other aspects, otherwise you'll die. You know, typical stuff for us equalizers. I know he's trying to lighten the mood, but instead, this hits even harder. Everyone who's like me has already been contacted by their aspect, and they knew what was going on. All that shit that I had to go through alone. Well, I can't do anything about that now, so better late than never. I know you're trying to cheer me up, but I went through hell and back already, so I'm not in the best of moods right now. You know, my parents thought that I needed professional help. I was babbling about nonsense every time that I tried explaining what was going on. Life was not easy with all the nonstop flickering around me. The wolf looks away, struck by what I said. He didn't think about any of this, judging by his reaction. I am truly sorry about your struggles, Lucian. I am. How can I help? I just want to get to Miss Refulgence. There is no point in going to her office, since she's already gone off campus, as I told you. She normally tells me where she is going so that I can manage her schedule and notify her of any changes. This time she vanished. Folks, don't just vanish. Well, she's gone right now, either way. What do you want me to say? There's nothing that I can do about it. Do you want to talk to me about whatever you could have on your mind? I know a lot, too, and could help you. 
He's all that I've got right now, and I am in no position to decline anything that might help me clear whatever is going on. This entire situation is getting to me. At first, it felt like I could handle it, but now, I could explode any second. This is messed up, and although I am trying to keep myself steady, I'm on edge about everything. What's an equalizer? Karen puts on his usual smile. Would you want to go somewhere more private? We can go to my office. It's right next to Miss Refulgence's. Yes, sure. While we walk, I notice Kieran's aspect looking at me. Something that I said must have bothered it, or at least made it acknowledge me as someone worthy of its attention. The sound of our paws on the floor is hammering at me. I keep swishing my tail in annoyance, but I can't help it. We're almost there. I'll make some tea, okay? Thank you, but no. Water, then? We get to his office, which is a door down next to Miss Refulgence's office. It is a quaint little place, a painting on the wall, some shelves with a lot of folders in them, and little miniatures on his desk. The wolf one catches my eye, a wooden bust that's carved in a beautiful manner. Kieran notices me staring at it. He opens a small fridge and pulls out a bottle of water. It's sealed, so I know there will be no funny business. But what if it's already laced somehow and resealed it? I need to calm down. This paranoia isn't helping, but I don't want to get doped up again and not to be able to react when he pushes me out the door like that panther. I know she drugged me and I won't let that happen again. Maybe I should talk to Darius or Fabian about this. No, they would think that I am insane if all I do is ramble. Have a seat. Thanks. Uh, can you start talking now? There's no need to be pushy. I wanted us to talk in private so nobody looks at us like we're some maniacs plotting the demise of our university or something ridiculous like that. Yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. It's cool. So let's start with the equalizer part. I find myself holding my breath for a second, although I only found out today that I am this equalizer thing. It has been an eternity for me not knowing what's going on. I am unsure why Miss Refulgence hasn't told you herself yet, but this is common knowledge for everyone who knows about aspects. I don't think that it will be a problem to share this information with you. What you know up to now is that you can see aspects. You can also absorb aspects in order to preserve your lifespan. If you don't, you'll feel exhausted enough to collapse and most likely die. Hearing this being talked about out in the open like it's a normal conversation, unreal. My eyes cannot get any wider than this, and he hasn't even told me anything new yet. Equalizers absorb an aspect, but that doesn't mean that they consume it. Since you're here, you've done it yourself at least a few times. In most cases, nothing bad happened to the folks whose aspects you absorb. They went on with their day oblivious to what you did. Are you following me so far? I've been through this a few times, but I didn't notice anything different about the folks, yes. In your case, I don't know what you equalize. I'm getting ahead of myself. An equalizer normalizes someone's feelings expressed in their aspect. Let's take a simple feeling like sadness. You got a bad grade on a test you studied hard for. You're sad about it. Your aspect should then show that off to an equalizer. The equalizer then absorbs that sadness so that it can doesn't reach dangerous levels. What happens when someone doesn't do that? Good question. Sadness can develop into various other feelings based on everyone's different personality. Some might start hating either their teacher, their work, or themselves. Some might be emboldened to do better next time. Others might quit out of rage. These are all possible scenarios, and an equalizer's job is to regulate those feelings so that they don't reach extremists. That doesn't sound too bad. What about other feelings like happiness or joy? Uh, the same applies there too. Really? Why though? Isn't being happy a good thing? Why would anyone take away happiness? Equalize it, not take it away. Consider this. A happy person can do a lot of good deeds if the feelings expand into altruism, passion, love, and so on. But what if being happy leads to boisterous actions, recklessness, or excessive behavior? Everyone is different and we don't know what each folk might do. As equalizers, we need to make sure that the feelings of folks around us don't get out of control. This sounds dumb, absurd even. We're effectively taking away folks' intentions. If they're happy or sad, they might do something based on those feelings. But if we take that away, 
they'll float around with half-assed impulses? In a way, yes. This is all meant to protect us. From whom? You know what the Grand Unification is, right? Of course. Who doesn't? What if I told you that the Grand Unification happened because of equalizers like us? He can see my look of shock and surprise, so I'm sure that he wanted to hit at the biggest fundamental fact that's like a beacon for every folk out there. Carnivores like me and you ruled over everyone else for hundreds of seasons. By comparison, the Grand Unification happened. About a few hundred seasons ago, nobody really knows exactly when it did. We're trying to find solutions for all the damage that we've done to our fellow folk. The carnivore rule happened because our feelings got the best of us. Our instincts played a big part in that, sure, but we could have done better. Should have done better. It is a shameful thing to think about. Although it's been a very long time since the Grand Unification, some herbivores still cross the street away from me in the evening or at night. I don't look half as intimidating as Darius or Miss Refulgence, but these fangs are enough to instill nasty memories in some folk. So you're saying Equalizers stopped carnivores from devouring others? More than that, Equalizers took out a part of the fear and hate that the herbivores were feeling at the time. Courage, compassion, and a whole lot more made it possible to get where we are now. Okay, but why are we doing it now? Stratia is a big continent, Lucian. Not everyone is a fan of the Grand Unification. There have been reports of missing herbivores, but none of them could be pointed to devouring. Extremist carnivores exist, so the possibility is there even if the media isn't talking about it. You're right. I stopped watching the news anyway because of all of the depressing stuff. There aren't enough of us equalizers to manage everything. It's not an easy task, especially in more remote places. We also don't know how many of us are out there either. Some might die before they figure out how things work. I got lucky. Didn't you say an aspect visits each equalizer? I did, yes. But if you're an example of how things can go sometimes, then we have no idea about the actual number of equalizers. Who knows how many died already? The door flings open. Miss Refulgence stares us down, fuming. Kieran gets up from his chair, greeting the panther. Miss Refulgence, you're back. Yes, Mr. Cliffs, obviously. Why is Mr. Volps here? He wanted to see you. He has plenty of questions about equalizers, and I thought that I'd... This is not your place. You should have understood that since I didn't instruct you to talk to Mr. Volps. The wolf looks straight at the ground, as if he wants to crawl under there. I apologize, Miss Refulgence. It won't happen again. Mr. Volps, if you'd follow me, please. I look at Kieran, who keeps staring at the ground, as if he was shattered into pieces by the panther's comments. Once we get to Miss Refulgence's office, Kieran comes in with tea, but I push it away, eliciting a small smirk from the wolf. Mr. Cliffs, what do you see when you look at Mr. Volps' aspects? Kieran looks at me, taking his eyes away from the ground for the slightest of seconds. A few aspects? Maybe five or more? That would be all. Thank you. The wolf nods, turning around and closing the door from the outside. Why do you treat him like that? He was only trying to help me. That is none of your concern. You, Mr. Thousand Fox Aspects, should be more worried about yourself. A, a thousand? Apparently so. What? Why do I have so many? I'm sweating, trying to act all cool is great and all, but I feel my stomach cramping up every passing second. I don't know what any of this means, but it sure doesn't feel right. We each have one aspect. You have a, a few too many. You are, by all accounts, a complete abnormality. The moment that I saw you, I knew something was off. When you came here and drank my tea, none of the aspects subsided. Nothing changed. That is why I left in a hurry, to contact my colleagues from Frantulia and Biscor Universities. They are the Equalizer representatives there. Both will be here shortly to study you. Study me? We need to know everything about your aspects before you can go back to your dorm room. Her tone changed and I don't have any sense of safety anymore. If my tail was shivering last time that I saw her, it is now stiff with fear. I want to leave now. That is no longer possible, Mr. Volps. I advise you to remain seated and do not make a fuss. I lunge at the door trying to open it, 
but it's locked. Kieran must have done that when he left. I turn around and fill my lungs with air, preparing to scream as loud as I can. A useless try. The panther has already struck me with the syringe, and in a few seconds, everything goes black. Chapter 4, Displacement. And that's where we're going to leave it for today. So, this refulgence turned out to be suspicious, sussy, if you will. She did give Lucian the um, a contact so that he is able to easily deal with the light emanating from a person and thus able to see a person's aspect, which I am already hearing you guys saying, oh my god, it's such like Jojo, oh my god, it's their stand, oh my god, I don't watch anything but anime. Um, but yeah, that's basically what, th the best way to describe it, isn't it? Mm. But yeah, so, as Kieran explained it, each person that has an aspect, or that is able to, I guess, interact with an aspect, is able to, I guess, regulate a person's emotions. And on the one hand, that is a good thing because it is able to, I guess, help people deal with what is going on with like a person as, you know, perhaps a psychiatrist or a psychologist would. Um, but on the other hand, it also seems like it could be used to sort of uh, temper someone or a group of people or a movement, perhaps. For example, let's say that there is, I don't know, like maybe some protests or something going on about, you know, certain things going on in the world. And you happen to be a group of people whose interest is, you know, shutting down those protests. Then you could use equalizers in order to sort of tone down the sort of raging emotions that these people who are upset who happen to be protesting about you know something going on you know you can send them into these protests these crowds these groups these gatherings of people and basically nip it in the bud by you know reining in their enthusiasm their anger and you know these things basically toning it down if not you know completely erasing it so I could see Lucian's, you know, way of thinking about it. Like, yeah, sure. You were able to sort of pull a, what is it called? A Zootopia and basically make it so that herbivores and carnivores can live side by side. But you did it by essentially erasing a certain aspect of a of a whole type of group of people so that they would not be reduced to mindless eating machines, I guess. Um, but yeah, so like, it has its pros and its cons. I can see it. Mm. Uh, depending on who is using it, it might have more cons than pros. Because like I said, you could weaponize this. But yeah. Also, uh, as Kieran also pointed out, because Lucian didn't have his aspect uh, speak to him, he wasn't aware that, you know, what was going on. Uh, thus, he wasn't able to figure out how to deal with it properly. He, for him, it was just, oh, bright lights. Um... I don't know how it would have changed. There's also the whole thing about there being apparently thousands of foxes as his aspect instead of just like one big fox. It's thousands of these things. And like you see with like the main menu when it starts up, you see like the like the four foxes, but apparently there's thousands of them. Um, I am wondering what that is about. I'm, I'm assuming they're going to do something where it's like, oh, he's a kid soon. 
kitsune. And the aspects are like his tails. But he's like a thousand-tailed kitsune. Um, uh, that, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, this also explains why he was able to recharge from his parents and from Atlas. Where when his parents were hugging him and they were scared about losing him, like a part of their life joined and was absorbed by um, Lucian. And then this may explain what's going on with Atlas, where like he was joyful, he was drunk, he was like, he, he lost all of his inhibitions and Lucian was able to absorb that. But then immediately after the next day, it's sort of like, oh, uh, what in the world did I just do with this, with my neighbor who I haven't spoken with in forever? Well, not forever, for a, a good while. So it is very possible that Lucien unintentionally um, removed that thing within Atlas that was saying like, oh yeah, this guy is attractive, maybe I should fool around with him that came from the fact that he was drunk and all that other stuff. That he was unconsciously absorbing all of those inhibitions from Atlas so that right after Atlas was like, yeah, I shouldn't do this. I don't want to do this anymore or whatever. But then afterwards, it probably came back because it's part of something that he actually wanted to do. But this little idiot here kind of absorbed that inhibition. So for a while, Atlas was like, oh, no, I shouldn't do this. Like, oh, crap. Like, ugh. And, but then later on, if you recall at the restaurant where Atlas was with Chrissy and he was supposed to propose, um, Lucian pointed out that he could see Atlas's, like, his, his aspect, I guess, because it's called now, but it was, like, sort of tiny and sort of dim. And Chrissy's was like trying to reach out towards his. Um, so perhaps because this little idiot wasn't there to help Atlas regulate his now, like he did for um, I heard the, the rabbit and the lion, where he kind of helped bring it back out, uh, that Atlas didn't have that. So yeah, whatever. I don't know. Um, so yeah, like, that is my theory so far. I will point out that, uh, I don't know if you noticed it, but, uh, the writing on this visual novel does, might need a little work, because sometimes it does feel a little hard to read it, because the, the flow of the, the, I guess you could call it the narrative flow, feels a little stiff it doesn't feel like it's flowing out naturally but that might just be me because I, I might need to have warmed up a little at the beginning in order to be able to like you know read at my full list and be able to read properly but like mm, I don't know it, it felt a little stiff to me so I mean but that like you can more or less understand what is going on, right? So as long as you can understand it, then that's good. Uh, other than that, I am interested to see what's going to happen next, which is a lie because I already know what's going to happen. <laughs> um, but I am interested in knowing where the story is going. So yeah, that's, you know, more what I want to say. Anyway, so um, thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play light my way, you can do so by going down into the link in the description for the creator's Twitter page or for whatever Twitter page that might exist that will have a link for the itch.io page where you can download the game and play it yourself, or you can just go to itch.io and download it yourself. And as you can see, they do have a Patreon, which you can, you know, subscribe to in case you want to support the project. And that might have early access to builds of light my way, you know, so you'll be in the know before everyone else. And as you can see, they also have a Discord, so you can subscribe, not subscribe, you can um, join their Discord and, you know, talk and do stuff like that. Anyway, so uh, I guess that's it for now, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.